Tepe, welcome to studio and thanks for joining us. The top 100 brands that you publish, is there consistency in the top 10 or the bottom 10? the top brands remain the top brands in the continent. There's relative consistency in terms of the brands which are uh, which are common across across the years. But what's interesting is that in 2011 and 2012, we only did a survey among eight countries. But in 2015, we did a survey across 22 countries, which collectively represent 77% of the continent's GDP and 77% of the continent's population. But the results have been remarkably similar, with MTN being the leading brand in Africa, and the Coca-Cola, the Samsung, the Apple being among the top uh, the top brands in Africa. Mm -hmm. And of course, the one interesting thing about those brands is that 77% of the brands that Africans admire are non-African. MTN is one of the few African homegrown brands out of a galaxy of quite a number. Why is that the case? I think what MTN has been able to do is uh, they've been able to really build a very strong band with a clear value proposition. Uh, consistency has been quite key. But to me, the most important thing is if you look at uh, among those top 100 brands, only 12 brands in that entire list can be what we call pan-African brands, operating in a lot of countries across every regional economic region, across every political region. And those 12 brands are all non-African. MTN is the only brand that comes close to it, uh, operating in 17 countries compared to the others which are operating in 22 or so countries across the continent. You look at a brand like Toyota, operates in 33 brands across the continent. Brand like Coca-Cola, brand like Samsung, a brand like Apple admire it, but may not be accessible in those, in, in those countries. The secret to MTN's uh, our success is that MTN is an accessible brand. It is across every region. Uh, it is across every political region. And to me, that's the key of why they've been uh, really successful. When we take into account the diversity of the African markets, whether it's southern, east or west, does the same brand appeal apply? Let's be Africa focused. A brand like uh, MTN, which is a made in Africa brand, uh, their value proposition is quite simple. They are everywhere you go in Africa, and they are going to help you to connect, to communicate, and to transact. That proposition speaks to everybody, because all consumers across the, the, the various uh, diversities uh, require the brand to deliver on its basic proposition. And the brand in telecom, what telecommunications has been able to do broadly is to really break down the barriers, and M10 has benefited from that. And in terms of brand appeal, is there a difference between what Africans admire in brands to other parts of the world? Not necessarily. You see, uh, people admire a brand for one of two reasons. That the brand is going to either transform their lives or the brand is going to inspire them to aspire for a different type of lives. So whether you're American, whether you're European, whether you're African, a brand has to play an important role in your life. It has to help you become something or want something or do something. And that has got nothing to do with race, religion, all borders. At the bottom end as well, we've seen brands disappear overnight. What causes brands to fall out of the category? So you will fall off if you're not relevant. You will fall off if you're not continuing innovating. You will fall off if you're not keeping in touch or leading your consumers. Now let's take an example like a Kodak, which is a photographic brand. Now Kodak found itself in a very unfortunate situation where a telephone is now competing with Kodak. And Kodak, the film business, they define themselves very narrowly in the film and photographic space, whereas the cellular phone defined itself within a communication or a productivity tool. And part of communication productivity is to be able to take pictures. And that's why a mobile phone is the number one camera in the world. And that repositioned a brand like, like Kodak. That made a brand like Kodak really irrelevant. When we come to a brand like within telecommunications, which are very dynamic when it comes to innovation, a brand like Nokia. Nokia used to be the number one brand across Africa and, of course, across the world. But Nokia is no longer the number one brand. It has been replaced by a Samsung, which is now the number one, number two brand in the world. And what Samsung has been able to do, they have been able to be relentlessly innovative. And they have taken the same tricks that a Nokia has, which is offering a wide variety of products to be able to serve the widest range of consumers. So being accessible and available to every single consumer. But most importantly, which I always admire about what Samsung says about them, is that their products respond to the conditions of the, of the, of the continent. Teba, thank you so much for your time. Absolute pleasure.